Hi guys, the Tories are now in opposition. So, they will attempt to hold the government to account? Of course not. They know two things about that. First, a party with a massive majority is more concerned about rebellions than anything the opposition can do. And second, they aren't interested in the concerns of ordinary people, just wedge issues. However, what they will do is grandstanding, and you're going to see a lot of this from potential leaders of the Tory party, like Kemi Badenoch. The former business secretary delivered a condescending speech directed at Angela Rayner, but the real audience is Conservative Party members. Badenoch started out nice, but then the sniping began. So I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to her on her first outing as a minister in the chamber, because it's only going to be downhill from here. You see, the thing is, I've been a Secretary of State before, and after five years as a minister, you learn a thing or two about government that you never can in opposition. I've been there, done it, and I can tell the right honourable lady that she has been stitched up. <laughs> it is quite clear that the bills and policies from the King's speech she's just referenced have not been written by her, but by the Chancellor and the Chancellor's advisers. We all know this because we watched the member for Leeds West announce them in far more detail in her speech last week. And all the stuff the Secretary of State worked on in opposition, like her new deal for workers, has been taken off her and given to the Business Secretary. So, I'm sorry to tell the Right Honourable Lady that her colleagues, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor and their many advisers have written a manifesto and made promises that are not deliverable and they've hung them around her neck and said, Angie, you go out there and you sell it. <laughs> I'm sad to see many of her shadow team not sitting beside her as ministers. They worked for free, grinding in opposition for years only to watch the children of the chosen ones get the ministerial cars yeah, yeah, yeah. and salaries before their maiden speeches yeah. are written. Wow. Golden tickets. Sue Gray was a lot nicer to me when she worked in my department. Yeah. <laughs> I think we know who's in charge, and it's not the right honourable lady. She's been stitched up. They've made her the fall guy. They've promised one and a half million houses by the end of this parliament. That's over 800 houses per day, and we're already two weeks in. And as she goes on, day after day, she's going to realise that a backlog is building and there's no way out. But I want her to know that I'm here for her. <laughs> I'll be here to hold her hand and walk her through what is likely to be a very difficult time. I may even give her some tips, because having worked in that department, I know what needs to be done. I know what we should have done that we didn't do. And I know that they're going to make the same mistakes. It's not that one and a half million homes by the end of this parliament is unachievable. It's that it's going to require the sort of systemic change which they are not ready for. I know they're not ready because of how they voted in the last parliament and how they campaigned in their own constituencies. I'm not going to read out the long list of all the cabinet members who've been opposing planning in their backyard, including the housing minister. Many of them have been thinking that they get into government and concrete over lots of Tory constituencies. Three weeks ago, just 15% of the Green Belt was in Labour constituencies. Now it's 50%. They aren't Tory constituencies now, they are Labour. So, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would say, yes, they are Labour. They are Labour. I would say to members opposite, they are now your voters and your electorate and you're going to have to tell them that you're going to do something that many of you promised locally that you would never do not that long ago. So what is she trying to do here? She's trying to do two, two things. She's trying to drive a wedge between uh, the leadership of the Labour Party and the government and the individual MPs. So it's, when she's talking here about the Green Belt, look, as it was pointed out, the Green Belt, the Green Belt is not literally fields and countryside. But also when it comes to planning, as I've covered in another video, the problem is not issuing more planning permission permits. The problem is developers. The developers need pressure applied to them to actually develop things. Because you can talk about paving over the countryside, but the problem so far at the moment is that the developers are holding everything back. So if the government can apply pressure to them, they're going to be able to resolve some of these problems regarding housing. Now, the other issue, of course, is about grandstanding. She's a, she's a member of the opposition. She has no control over the new government. She can't hold the government to account in the same way that the Labour Party couldn't hold Boris Johnson, Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak's government to account. Once you have a massive majority or even a, 
a significant majority, you can do pretty much as you wish. The problem, of course, is the backbenchers. You want to, you want to avoid rebellions. But I, I think this is more about her positioning herself as a future conservative leader. So she wants to appear tough. She wants to be seen as holding the government to account, holding the Labour Party to account, calling them out from time to time, calling them out at every occasion she can at the dispatch box. And she's and this is what it's about. It's not so she doesn't care about holding them to account. It's about pretending, it's about perception, it's about looking as if you're doing that. So that Image, videos like this uh, are seen by Conservative Party members and they say, yeah, let's let's back Kemi. She's tough. She's going to hold the government to account. She would be a great leader. She would be a great future prime minister. This is what she wants them to see. This is what this is all about. It's theatre. I keep saying this. The problem with PMQs, the problem with the chamber, the parliament, it's mostly, it's mostly theatre. The real work is done in committees. And unfortunately, politicians take advantage of this situation. They see, here's an opportunity for me to boost my image, reach out to party members, not actually do my job, because she's not interested in doing her job. She's interested in becoming Conservative Party leader. Will it work? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.